idea of emptying the cup is, of course, when it's full, you can't put anything more new. Um, and, uh, and right now, it's in the same way when you have a piece of paper. Uh, it's better to write on a clean piece of paper than it is to write on something that's already written. Uh, uh, so, already, uh, Instructor Flavio uh, has been here for the last two and a half, three years. Um, but uh, his approach to what we've been doing is in a very, um, very pure, uh, pure way. Um, it's almost like uh, he is selecting the Navy SEALs, you know, the Special Forces training or something. Um, we have a strong physical component uh, to Harangdo, um, and um, uh, we, we consider it <clears throat> as a way of developing leaders. Uh, it, is a, it is what we I like to think school of leadership. Harangdo, our history dates back 1600 years in Korean history. Uh, Korea was divided into three kingdoms, um, and the Shilla kingdom, which was on the southeastern border, was the smallest of the three. And the smallest kingdom uh, united both the two larger kingdoms, and the ones who, uh, who conquered were called the Hwarang, flowering knights, and they were actually boys, teenagers, uh, and the, you know, that, that spirit is what we have preserved. Uh, so Hangdu is still taught in that kind of strictness in some aspect. Um, his teacher, uh, his teacher's teacher, in, is a colonel in the in the Carabinieri military police in Italy, and he is also a very uh, strict uh, person, and in, 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 uh, it's very physical as well. Um, uh, so the way they train is to overcome the mind, uh, the body, with your will and spirit. Your spirit is tested when your body fails you. When your body is all good, then your spirit, your will is not tested. So the idea is to break down the body uh, that you can no longer do, and then that's when uh, your true strength, power comes into play. Uh, so that is the form of training that they do. So they train two, three days in the mountains, no drink, really, no eating, no sleeping, no food, no water, and they just train. Um, so that is in the school of thought where Instructor Flavio comes from. So I think there is a pre-notion here in Luxembourg, especially amongst the colleagues of, of Giuseppe, um, because he told me he recruited 30, 40 people, I mean, just to know that many people to bring in, that's a lot. Uh, you know, I only know a handful of people that are, that are friends of mine. So, um, there's a lot of effort that went into it. But for me, uh, you know, it's a little bit different, of course. So, uh, and that is the perspective that I'm trying to spread throughout Europe right now. And I've been here since June uh, to Genoa, to Pisa, to Rome. Now I'm here, and my next trip is to Holland to UK, then I will come back to here to Luxembourg. Um, but martial art is a means, is a means of bettering ourselves. You know? um, and for me, uh, it is a way of developing the faculty, the determination, the courage, and the strength to ask the right questions, to ultimately arrive at the truth. Uh, the formation and foundation of academia in the modern world came from the Greeks. And the Greeks uh, was the idea of university comes from the word unity and diversity. To understand unity through diversity. Uh, but I feel that the modernization and the industrialization of the world have forced it into a different perspective. One of specialization and less of a holistic approach but more compartmental. Uh, um, and that isolates and pe uh, per people's perspective and makes them myopic. In the world today, we have, we're in the information age. So through the internet, we have access in our fingertips to all the information in the world. And every day that's increasing exponentially. So we have this sense that we are very uh, 
diversified, that we are very open-minded, that we are very progressive and, and, uh, and so forth. But I beg to differ uh, because what you or you may not realize or may realize is that all the search engines and all the social media, it is, they contain an algorithm. And that algorithm basically allows when you click on like or click on what you watch, it then sends you what you like, not what you dislike. In order for you to have the understanding of an open mind and diversity, you need to see the opposing argument. You need to see what you don't want to see. See? So actually, in fact, we're not open-minded at all. And if that was the case, we'd have greater unity if we understood greater diversity. But that's not the case. We are specialized. For what reason? For what reason? All of you should know you're here for that reason. And I think that reason is economic. It's for money. You're specialized to get a job. Remember, knowledge is actually for seeking truth. Truth. Not for money. So, university is an area in which you should go to discover truth. But we go to university to get a job. So, my challenge is to open people's minds. To... to allow them to seek for truth once again. Harangdo is about that. We taught in a holistic approach. We believed in the Eastern metaphysics of Um Yang or Yin Yang, Yin Yang, which states that for everyone there's an equal opposite, and hence the, the blue and red, you know, we see on the flag, and also in China it's black and white. But it's a circle. Uh, and circle means very interesting too, right? Wherever you start in a circle, you come back. Wherever you start in a circle, you always come back to where you started. That really didn't mean much to me till I got a little older. And now I'm a little bit older, I came back full circle. And I realized what that means. And in that circle, you divide it in half, there's two equal opposites. But that alone will just state that there's two equal opposites. But there's the wiggly line in between demonstrates that there's interaction between the two opposing forces. And in fact, that's the reason or that is how everything in the universe is created. From a singularity, they came two. And from that two, everything is created, the Big Bang. And it's interestingly enough, even science as Physicists say, scientists say, that science can explain everything, but in fact, it cannot. So they backtrack and they say, hmm, give us one miracle and then we'll explain the rest. And that one miracle is the origin of the Big Bang. It cannot be explained. So, science does not have all the answers. But in fact, we are adopting science as truth. And science has now become dogmatic. And then I even question you, epistemology. I question you to, to seriously question what you know as truth. In fact, all the things you've learned, you've learned all through hearsay. Were you there? Did you witness it? Did you see it? And in fact, History is written by the conqueror, not the conquered. So it cannot be the truth, but only the half of the truth through the martial discipline. Uh, uh, I think what we first have to overcome is fear. Fear of self and fear of injury. Uh, fear of ridicule. Fear of ridicule. Uh, you know, if we come back right full circle into the Roman era, thumbs up or thumbs down, live or die. We are aspiring all now, thumbs up. Everybody wants thumbs up to be liked. But that's not the aspiration one should have. And in fact, if you are seeking truth, people will turn against you. 
I ask this simple question. If your friend, if your lover jumps off a cliff, will you jump? If 10 of your friends jump off a cliff, will you jump? If a hundred, a thousand, no, let's say in fact, all seven billion people on the planet jump off a cliff, will you jump? Will you? Of course not. Of course not. Of course you won't. You really think about it. I think you've already jumped. I think most of you have already jumped. The other difficulty today in seeking truth is because the mass information. There is so much information. There's so much truth. So much is out there. How do you know what's for real? So you've given up. So we are permanent, permanently agnostic about everything. We are either neither for nor against. As long as we exist, we're good. I beg to differ. What do we aspire to today? What do we aspire to? When you give up the search for truth and you are agnostic to everything, then you become self-centered. You are God. And then as individual gods, what do you seek? Self-pleasure. What makes me happy? What pleasures me? That is a seriously bad place to be. What makes me happy? And I like to ask even that question. What does make you happy? What is happiness? I've asked this question all of my life. I've taught thousands of students. And how do I know these things? And how can I sit here and tell you about truth? Who am I to say? Well, no different but I've had the fortunate or unfortunate opportunity to teach thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. And I've known them personally. And in doing that, I've started to understand the human condition and human beings in a different way that maybe some of you are not exposed to. So I speak from this perspective. And my perspective, once again, is only one perspective. You all have your perspectives. But as I said, the idea of an elephant I bring to your attention. If there are three blind people, and one blind person is at the tail, and one blind person is at the side, and one blind person is at the front, to the blind person at the tail, it's a, what is an elephant? It's a fiery ball. Well, to the person who's standing on the side, it's a flat, rough surface. To the person who's sitting uh, in the front, it's a long, uh, no, a trunk, a long hose. Now, let me ask you, are they wrong? No, they're all right. They're all right, right? But it's not the truth. But it's not the truth. So the truth is exists. The truth is out there. You have to look for it. That, to me, is what I'm doing. It is a way to give the means for the individual to overcome their fears, to overcome the fear of judgment and ridicule by men, by people, and to stand firmly on their ground. First, you do that physically, and by physically being strong, you can then be exercise your mental uh, intellect. And through the intellect, you can start to understand. But this is the other part, problem of the internet, intellect, internet too, uh, is it lies. The mind is the ego. And the mind, the ego, always lies. Because ego is a self-surviving mechanism. Without it, we think horribly of ourselves and we can't exist. So then if we go from the Freudian perspective, then the id, your core, is primitive and savage. And we need the ego to protect it, that, that evil to, 
to come out. And then men have even greater ego, the superego, to keep that beast within from coming out. I like to think that every person possesses evil but also good. And that that good is what we need to cultivate. Is in the same way I challenge people to look at a glass of water. Right? You know this saying, is it half full, half empty? And we use this as a simple thing, right? And what is that? Oh, if you look at it half empty, you're a pessimist. If you look at it half full, you're an optimist. Ah, okay. But I go a little further. What you have to understand is that it's the same glass of water, no matter how you look at it. Which means it has nothing to do with a glass. It has everything to do with you. What you choose to see, half full or half empty. Do you dwell in the possibilities? Or do you dwell in the negativity? In the impossibilities? And the only way that one can accomplish anything in their life, in my opinion, is that first you must see it. If you cannot see it, it cannot be done. But once you see it, I, I started skateboarding when I was 13, when it was very popular, when it first started. And then it died out and I didn't do it. Hitting 50 again, hitting my midlife, I got in connection with my son, my student's son, who was a 10 year old, and we started talking about skateboarding. And it took me right back to where I was, I was 13. And we were talking like, you know, best friends. Uh, and isolating the father, he had no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> and what I found is that, wow, that's a great thing. It was a connection back to my childhood. And this is also what I mean by coming back full circle. I became a child again. I wanted that childhood. I worked my ass off in all of my youth. For what I'm doing, I worked, I was determined, I had ambition. I was going to conquer the world. When people came up and asked me, what are you going to do? What's your goal? I said, looking at dead in the eye, world conquest. <laughs> and of course, that did not happen. Then, in looking back again, in my midlife, what I realized is I did not have joy. I didn't know joy. And talking to that child, it brought me joy. So I started skateboarding again to be a child. And these, all these wounds are from skateboarding, not from Harangdo. <laughs> and then I started to question the idea of childhood. Wow, innocence. Wow, okay. What is innocence? Purity. Purity. What's contrary to innocence? Corruption. When do we get corrupt? When we mature. We have to be a child again, to be a child, to be innocent. When do you wonder? When do you ever wonder anymore? There's two words, wonder and wander. Do you wonder? Do you wander or do you wonder? You have deadlines. You have goals. You have a timeline. You need to follow the seven habits of successful people, whatever. That's another crop too. <laughs> and then I say to you, what is the longest distance between two points? A shortcut. There is no easy answer. There is no easy way. We would love to give you a black sash. We would love to give you a black belt, but it will not happen. You will have to work for it. And in fact, the true joy and happiness we receive from life are the things that we seriously worked hard for. Why do we need to demean everything and make it easy and dump everything down? Why? Because you want to sell things. But true happiness comes when you accomplish things that are challenging, that are worthwhile. And to bring back to the idea of why I brought up skateboarding, one of the one of the most famous legends of skateboarding, his name is Rodney Mullen. 
And Rodney Mullen is a little younger or about my age. And he is a little autistic. And he is a freestyle skateboarder. And I don't know if you know about skateboarding, but the ones who rode the pools and the surf, so skateboarding came from surfing. Okay? And the surfers did not like the freestyle guys. The freestyle, the one who did all the tricks on flatland and all that, were a bunch of nerds of skateboarding. The cool guys of skateboarding were the guys who were riding the pools and the ramps. Rodney Mullen was a freestyle guy. He was a master at skateboarding. This is the way he got lost in his own world. Because his father was a very determined, goal-oriented, success-oriented person. And to escape that, he skateboarded eight, nine hours a day, every day, obsessed. He never lost. The only time he lost was when his father said, ah, skateboarding is bad for you. It's ruining your life. So this is the last contest you're going to have. And that contest, he lost. And then he says, you know, there's a guy, there's kids in Madagascar. Madagascar. Okay? That's doing tricks. That tricks that he does. That's on YouTube. They watch and they do it. And then he asks this question. You know, do you think they're actually looking at my video and breaking it down step by step and every little mechanics and whatever it is of kinesiology and, phys and physiology and so forth to arrive at some theory or some formula and then exercise and practice it? No. The reason they're able to do it because they saw somebody do it. And all they're doing because they saw it. It's in their head. They can see it. So now they can do it. It's in the same way when the first person broke the four minute mile. No one ran the four minute mile until Roger Bannister ran it in the 1950s. Now that's the standard. Before anybody reached Mount Everest, it was impossible. Now there are thousands who reached Mount Everest. What my challenge to every individual here or every person that I teach is be first. Be first. What is the value of doing something that is possible? The value comes in doing something that's impossible. But you have to first see it. If you don't see it, it doesn't exist. And hence also, this is the idea of quantum physics. If we don't observe, if we don't see the moon, it is the measurement theory. If you go to measure the particle, the photons, it's there. But when you don't, it doesn't exist. So that then states the possibility that the moon, we don't see it, doesn't exist. That it's only there when we look at it. And then I question, can you see the world through any other person's eyes, through any other's perspective than your own? How do you know what they see? How can you see what they see? And then this other question. In fact, some physicists have found there's a binary code that exists in the most uh, subatomic level. So the idea that, wow, this all can be a computer simulation, hence the matrix. And then the idea of evolution, and Darwin was correct, then everything is random. Everything is random. But the possibility that life exists on this planet, statistically, it is like a marksman hitting a target the size of a coin. 20 billion light years on the far side of the observable universe, bullseye. Now, I'm sure you did not think that you come to a martial art master and hear about this. But once again, I'm a teacher. And what does teacher do? Teach. But what should a teacher do first? See the truth. I challenge all my students to seek the truth. Ask the question why. Do not follow blindly. Don't jump off the cliff without knowing why. And I believe once you know why, 
And when you work so hard 30, 40 years of your life and devote yourself and be a slave to a company, that you will awake and still be happy. But when you don't know the why, you're going to wake up sooner or later. And when you wake up, I don't think you'll be happy. That's so what I've done. I fought. I fought resistance in many ways. Physically, culturally, philosophically, always. I'm not afraid of consequences. And that's what Haramdo also does. You're not afraid. You are not afraid. When you're not afraid to die, it's a good thing. That is power. You can take my body, but you cannot take my will, my spirit. Okay, I said I didn't have a speech, but I guess that was my speech. <laughs> Sorry, my, my answer is so long-winded. No, sir, I explain what I know every day like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.